the end of the Cold War, and why are we getting things wrong? There are really three things happened in the late 1980s and the very beginning of the 1990s. Three things that were connected but were quite different. One of them was the end of the Cold War. Was that a defeat for the Soviet Union? No. We negotiated an end in the interests of both sides and in everybody else's interests because it was peaceful, it met everybody's needs. And then the second thing that happened that I consider a geopolitically seismic in the sense that you know, continents are moving around uh, in a geopolitical sense, the second thing was that communist rule in the Soviet Union was ended as an effective rule. Was that done as a pressure of the West or as a condition to end the Cold War? Absolutely not. It was done under Gorbachev's leadership because it was something the country needed to be done to free them up from that. And it happened that as the leader of the Communist Party, he was probably the only person who could have done it given the structure of that. Having removed the Communist Party from control of the Soviet Union, then the contradictions within the Soviet Union forced the country apart. The third thing, the end of the Soviet Union as a unitary state. That was not the end of the Cold War. And yet, many people in the West look at it as the end of the Cold War and as if we ended the Cold War in a victory. We won the Cold War. Look, we all won the Cold War. We negotiated an end. The end of the Soviet Union was brought about from forces within the Soviet Union. The American government, the British government, most of our Western allies did not want the Soviet Union to break up. President Bush, our first President Bush, gave a speech in Kiev August 1st, 1991, when they were discussing a union treaty um, to keep the republics of the Soviet Union together, all except the three Baltic countries. And Bush recommended to the Ukrainians to sign the Union Treaty. You could say, why didn't we want the Soviet Union to break up? Well, there were two big reasons. One, we didn't want to see a multiplicity of nuclear powers in the world. And two, we could see that the reforms that were going on in the Soviet Union were being pushed by Moscow. And if you break it up at this time, except for the three Baltic countries, which had already been moving very rapidly to a democracy, you were, in most of them, going to have retrogression. Now, of course, the myth in the, West, in, in the West is we won the Cold War, and then, having been talking about we won the Cold War, we began to treat Russia as a defeated country, <clears throat> which meant that increasingly, seeing uh, these actions, Russians say, well, we must have lost the Cold War, and, and it was the West who broke up the Soviet Union. They said they won, they broke up the Soviet Union, uh, they're out to get us, uh, they're enemies. And you get two completely incompatible narratives about what happened during and after the Cold War on both sides, both wrong. Because what we're hearing now, you know, in Moscow is that uh, uh, it, uh, the United States and its allies deceived Gorbachev uh, and broke up the Soviet Union in order to establish an American empire, American dominance throughout the world. Well, what evidence do they use for that? Well, after talking about a Europe whole and free, and also assuring Gorbachev that if a united Germany would stay in NATO, there would be no expansion of NATO jurisdiction to the east. That was not a treaty commitment. It was not a formal promise. It was certainly 
the diplomatic atmosphere of those negotiations. And none of us, frankly, in 1990, at the time Germany unified and we had a treaty, could imagine that there would be any reason to expand NATO to the east because we were thinking of building a security structure which would include Russia and Eastern Europe. How else can you have a Europe whole and free? Well, subsequent governments thought differently, but not because, as now the Russians claim, we wanted to get at Russia, but because of demands of the East Europeans. So what you had in the late 90s and then in the first decade of the 21st century was actions on the West, which I would say at the mildest were inconsiderate, and some, I would say, in the case of, of Russia, downright offensive, but a Russian overreaction, which often made the matters worse. And you get sort of a malign type of vibration that begins to shake the relationship. So it was not just the beginning of NATO expansion to the east, but the bombing of Serbia over Kosovo, done without UN approval. Uh, and that broke a commitment to the UN because you're not supposed to attack another country unless it has attacked you. Serbia had not attacked any NATO member. Now, there was a real human rights issue there. And then, of course, later, you had such things as the United States pulling out of the ABM Treaty, which we had a right to do, but was a stupid thing to do because it was really the basis of our dealings earlier with the Soviet Union and then would have been with Russia regarding these nuclear issues. Something we seem to have forgotten once the Cold War was over and we calmed this nuclear arms race is that you remain there are two preeminent nuclear powers, even with all that we have cut, and that's the United States and Russia. And then, on the background of all of this, we had all of the talk of a sole superpower. There were two superpowers before, now there's only one, the United States. And a superpower, by definition, can do anything, apparently. It's a meaningless term, and that's the reason I said I want to talk about power. It gets back to the very thing Senator Fulbright was talking about. 